Today, I'm going to be bringing you my free to play guide for Archer players in Rise of Kingdoms. What's going on, guys? Cheers. So basically, wh what? What are you looking at? That it's yeah, it's pink. Yeah, no, I can't tell you what it is. It's a secret. Come on. Anyway, this is the final entry of the free to play series that I've been doing here on this channel. So if you guys want general free to play investment advice, or if you want infantry advice or cavalry advice, just go ahead and check out the other videos on the channel. But today we're talking about archers, baby and archers. This there's a reason that this is the last one in the series. Okay. Because this is the hardest route to go for free to play in my opinion. Okay. And it's not because archers have bad commanders archers actually have a ton of really good commanders and right now with Gilgamesh and Amanatari coming into the game there's like never been a better time to be an archer player than right now so it's not because the, the commanders are bad it's pretty much the opposite it's like these archer commanders are so good that uh you really want to max like all of them <laughs> and so I had a really hard time figuring out which ones to recommend to you guys so that's why this is going to be such a, a a it was hard to put together okay so so that's my disclaimer guys if you're free to play archers are going to be a bit harder to invest in strictly because it's going to take more time and it's going to take more patience and the entire like first nine to 12 months of playing this game you're really not going to be investing in anybody other than ysg and then saving the rest of the sculptures for other commanders but anyway before we talk about commanders we have to talk about civilizations okay we have to talk about what is the best civilization for archer players okay there are four civilizations that focus on archers we have britain here which is great to start with and is great in the early game because you get boudica you also get that troop training speed which is nice otherwise this is not a great civilization archer attack is not great garrison capacity is like pointless as well so nothing really great there china is another great early game starting civilization because you get sun tzu who is very powerful one of the best epics uh, if not the best epic in the game universal troop defense is nice and five percent action point recovery is very good plus that building speed early game is going to be really crucial as well um, but moving into mid and late game i don't think china is a great pick for archer players as well next we have korea now korea is a great mid game choice for archer players not only do they get a really nice five percent defense stat they also get a bigger hospital which is cool and that research speed is going to be really nice if you're going to do a big big t5 push and you're trying to go for like maybe a late game mightiest governor win or something like that uh, but otherwise i'm not a huge fan of korea i don't think olg is very good and especially not for archer players finally we've got ottoman now ottoman is i think probably the best in terms of archer stats you get five percent archer health which they desperately need five percent march speed is great for free to play players because you have a slightly higher chance of getting away from your enemy which is good and there's a ton of active skill damage in the commanders we're going to be talking about today so by far ottoman is the best choice for archers if you're waging war in the late game however the actual best choice for archer players is germany and i know this is the trend for every video but guys if you're a free to play player and you are spending down your action points every single day i don't care what type of player you are germany is the way to go and the reason for that despite it having cavalry is because you get the troop training speed which is a nice passive but the 10 percent action point recovery is double what you get from china right it's double what you get from china um and it's just it's just better so if you're a free-to-play player who is active every single day and you're spending all your action points all the time germany is the best choice for you even as a archer player otherwise ottoman is the way to go for sure all right let's move on to the commanders okay because the the order with which you invest in legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms is very important so we've brought up the trusty tier maker here with every single commander in rise of kingdoms that matters the blues and greens don't matter uh you can see here i also have gilgamesh and amanatoria as well so we are up to date with the latest and greatest now if you're a new player this is an overwhelming amount of commanders so let me go ahead and organize this into a way that is going to be easier to understand all right so what we've done here is put all the archer commanders in the top row then we have the honorable mentions which are commanders that are not technically archer commanders but you may still be using as a free-to-play player finally we have the canyon team down here now your canyon team is going to be mostly comprised of your most powerful commanders but these are commanders that even though they're not archers maybe some of them will end up in your canyon team just because canyon is a bit different than open field fighting and that's really what this guide is all about right it's about getting the most value out of your open field fighting trades because i really don't think that free-to-play players should be leading rally 
rallies or leading garrisons because in season of conquest you're going to be required to max out your tech pretty much and as a free-to-play player that's really not possible no matter how much grinding you do uh you can get your tech in a very good position as free-to-play if you're doing everything right but still you want to have like max tech if you are leading a rally or a garrison so with that out of the way let's talk about these commanders okay kusunoki is a great archer epic commander he does a nice little bit of aoe and removing debuffs which is very very solid for kusunoki you can only get that effect otherwise on theodora which is very powerful so having the only epic with that is great um i think in the early game you're going to be forced to use kusunoki and we'll talk about that in just a little bit uh because he will sort of be your best option um but besides that um, I really, I really, you know, late game, you're not going to want to use him. You don't want to use any epics late game. Uh, Kiera is like maybe the only exception as a secondary, but even still like epics are not the way to go. We're going to move Kusunoki down here to pair five. Um, because again, you shouldn't really be using him late game, but you'll have to be using him early game. Um, Herman sort of the same thing, except I don't think he's as good as Kusunoki in terms of utility in the open field. So we're going to move him down to the avoid. And again, uh, you know, actually we'll put him in honorable mentions because you'll probably use him early game, but other than that, you won't Kiara the problem with her is you get her so slowly over time so even though she does boost uh, skill damage really nicely which is great and she has some aoe which i love she's really high damage the problem is you get her so slow that it sucks so we'll put her in pair five um she's definitely i think the most powerful archer epic but she takes a long time to get and even still she's still an epic right um, if we look at good old El Cid here, he is a gold key commander, so you should not be investing your universal legendaries into him. Now, all of his skills do apply in the open field, so that makes him nice. However, he's just a subpar legendary at this point. They, you know, he's, he's not great. He doesn't have AOE. His single target damage factor is fine, but really you're not going to use him too much and you shouldn't be investing universals by the time you get them to a usable state from gold keys alone it'll be three years down the line so uh yeah he's gonna be a uh he's gonna be in pair five again these are commanders that you may use early game sort of if you have nothing else but el cid just the fact that you get him so slow for free really sucks and he's not that great probably the worst legendary uh for for all the for all the archers right so keep that in mind now isong a E song yay my guy is so good we're gonna leave him here we're gonna talk about these guys in a little bit more depth later um edward i do not think you should invest in as a free-to-play player on paper he looks like a great choice he gives you march speed he gives you health his single target damage factor is huge um you could use him as a five 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 one but ultimately I don't think he's worth it you're not going to get the aoe value the rage requirement is very high he's just going to get swarmed down in the open field even with that 30 percent health and there's really nothing you can do about it so yeah don't recommend him even with tamiris who would be his best pair uh which brings us to tamiris she's great i'm gonna leave her up here we'll talk about her a little bit more in depth um let's also remove some of the other commanders that i don't think you should be investing in uh and that's actually going to be a mandatory um i know she's new and we haven't really gotten to test her yet but for open field fighting i'm just not convinced that she'll be better than the commanders we're going to talk about i'm not saying she's bad and again we do have to test her but um i just don't see how she could be you know um as good or better value than what we'll talk about in the video and also she comes around so late into the game that we're going to just put her in the avoid category um gilgamesh is interesting he's got a lot of hype right now obviously because he just came out and people are testing him and he's breaking zenobia which is great however he really feels like a rally commander to me um in the open field he does no aoe he doesn't have the attack tree so you don't get the benefit of being swarmed he doesn't have the defense tree like there's like i i don't know i think people are hoping he's good in the open field but i think realistically he's not going to be better than the other choices we're going to talk about in this video so late game you know he may be a late game investment and certainly you can use him at five five one one um but yeah i, I don't know I, the jury is still out on google mesh i'm not entirely convinced that he's going to be an absolute must use archer open field um commander for free-to-play players okay so let's put him down here for the in the avoid category for now but just keep in mind that like maybe he's we'll put him in honor bum mentions how about that just to separate him from the other two now we have broken it down to the final six okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move all these down here just to have a little bit more organization so when we talk about our first pair the first thing you should do is expertise song a right and that's pretty much the same thing for all troop types but especially archers because oh my god isong is an archer like that's just even more value out of him than you would normally get as any other player and here's the thing right here's the thing about being an archer free-to-play player and this is where it gets hard 
even though Isong comes around really early on in the early game, you know, you, 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 maybe you want to summon Richard as a free to play player, even, even as a, um, as an archer player, you may want to summon Richard, uh, just to have a primary for your Isong. Um, and really like, there's just no one to use with him. That's the downside, um, of going archers, right? You can do a Kusunoki primary Isong secondary. This is going to give you a nice open fields AOE, which is solid. Kiara, you get very late. Ethel fled Isong is a great pairing, but also sort of late, right? You sort of get Ethel fled by the time she's expertise, you know, all that. It's fine. You can use mixed troops with um, Isong, which is great. The problem with this march is it's a huge target. Like you want to kill Ethel fled no matter what, but you especially want to kill Isong. So like this is going to be the first target that dies in the open field. Um, so even though this is powerful, great AOE, great value, um, it's just going to die so fast if the enemy knows what they're doing. So there's really not a great pair. And again, you're going to get, uh, you're going to be getting your El Cid so slowly, right? That's the huge downside. Of course, you could do a Sun Tzu Isong A. This gives you a, a little bit of tankiness with full infantry, more skill damage on Sun Tzu, which is nice, a rage engine. But again, it's, it's, it's going to get targeted so, so, so fast um, that I really don't know what to say. Later on the line, you'll have the 5511 um, Martel, which is, you know, you're going to, this is going to really be an infantry march at this point. Um, but that'll be good use for your Esong. Uh, but either way, you can see what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, it's going to be really difficult for you in the early game as a free to play player because you're not going to have a great pair for your Esong. Now, Tamiris is the next commander that shows up. She shows up like 270 something days into your kingdom on the Mightiest Governor event. And that is another reason why this is so difficult because she shows up much later than Saladin, right? Where if you're if you're a cavalry player, Saladin is the first MGE that really matters. Um, Tamiris is the third MGE, right? After Saladin and then Constantine. So you have to wait a long time for Tamiris, uh, which isn't good. And she is a MGE commander. And MGE is really hard to win as a free-to-play player. And she's not a great pair with Isong, which is a commander that you've already invested in. Now, Tamiris, I still think is worth investing in as a free-to-play player um as a free-to-play archer player because of a couple of reasons her fourth skill is it provides huge utility which is really really nice and it's going to go really well with a combo we're going to talk about a little bit later um and the problem though is that you know she's got the attack tree she's not really going to be a primary ever she's going to be a secondary same thing with isong he's a secondary so at this point you're you know almost a year into the game um if you were able to get your hands on tamiris which is going to be hard as a, as a free to play mightiest governor um contender it's going to be hard and they're both secondary commanders right and so you're almost one year in and you have maybe a maxed esong and you're working on tamiris and maybe you have or maybe you don't maybe you have to wait for a card king that's the downside okay and then the next commander that we're gonna see that's useful is ramses and ramses is a god tier commander and he comes around uh, over a year into the game he'll show up on the wheel which is nice that he's on the wheel that's a guaranteed win um but that's why i said at the beginning of the video it's very hard to be a free-to-play archer player because for the first year you just have no pairs to fight in the open field pretty much until you get like an elko fled e song and even then that's not great because it'll get melted so that's my little rant let's go back to Tamiris for a second okay because I didn't explain I don't think you should expertise her in fact there are two things you can do with her and both of them require your skill reset items unless you're incred incredibly lucky um one thing that you could try to do is get a 5115 Tamiris and that's gonna be really hard it's gonna be really hard to get that the odds are you're not gonna get it but that is like the minimum that you could use Tamiris as a secondary in my opinion um, what you could try to do is get a 5155 Tamiris, which is probably the more realistic and better option. It's going to give uh, your march with her a much, uh, much it's going to be much more powerful uh, as a 5155. Um, of course, it takes more sculptures and, you know, it is what it is. I think those are sort of the two builds that you can go with Tamiris. And again, this is the only commander we're going to talk about today that requires skill resets. So if you're a free to play archer player, every single skill reset you get should be put pretty much into Tamiris to make sure that you get her to 5155 or 5115 if you're insanely lucky. Then comes Ramses. Okay, then comes Ramses. And the thing about Ramses is he is a commander that is excellent with 
and expertise. His expertise is so good, it stops healing. Um, I will say that you could get a 5551 five, Ramses, and he'll be very good in the open field, even a 5511. Um, but eventually, you're going to want to expertise Ramses and put him with your E song. Now, it takes so long to get to Ramses, right? And so by the time he comes around, you should have a lot of sculptures saved up for Ramses. So that's the good news. So you really got to be patient and wait until he comes around. Um, but expertising Ramses with E song is an insanely good pair in the open field field it gives some a little bit of tankiness to Esong, uh, but it also gives him a rage engine if he gets swarmed because of that attack tree uh, he's just really great this is even a rally combo sometimes which i think at this point there are definitely some better combinations available but you could you know try this if you wanted to i don't think it's a great strategy as free to play but ultimately this is an insanely good pair by the time you make that pair you'll almost certainly have an expertise to ethel flood i would hope right so you could do an ethel flood to Myris if you want as a second march this is a Again, gonna get absolutely swarmed down it's gonna be very difficult to use this March so keep that in mind however at the same time that Ramses comes around you also get the ability of getting Artemisia and this is your primary for your Tamiris and again it's a mightiest governor commander and this is also why it's so hard again so hard as a free to play archer player because Artemisia is great as a 5-5-1-1 for a free-to-play player. You're going to get most of her value there because you're not going to use her as a garrison. You're going to use her in the open field. And the reason that she's so good and even stopping at 5-5-1-1 is because her second skill gives you a ton of health, a ton of defense. She's very tanky. She has a really powerful um, fan-shaped AoE, which you're really lacking on, on, on Tamiris here and on Ramses. So I love the AoE on her. I love the defense tree on her. Um, the defense and health is really what's going to get you the best trades for the open field um, as a free-to-play player because those are the most important stats and she has all of that so that's really great having an Artemisia and Tamiris in the open field is going to be tanky it's going to deal a ton of AoE and it's going to be a very uh, very supportive march because you're applying that poison to the enemy uh, which is just going to help all your allies which is very very good so at this point um, your patience has paid off because you have two extremely powerful archer marches like very good in the open field these are very good and remember i said archers were hard as free to play not because they're bad commanders but because they take so long so if you're willing to wait 400 days uh to get this set up then great news you have two very powerful open field pairs by that point you're also probably gonna have a 5511 martel which means you can pair ethel fled behind him and that's going to be another supportive aoe march that will be full infantry so you'll have something to do with those as well which is great um you may even want to do a mixed army potentially because you get extra attack with ethel fled it's up to you putting that aside though let's go ahead and talk about the next commanders that you should invest in and they are of course nebu with cyrus and these commanders come around at the same time one is wheel one is mightiest governor oh my god now here's the thing right the great news is that even though nebu is a mightiest governor commander you can stop him at 5511 and he'll be extremely powerful he'll be extremely powerful you're not going to rally with him you don't need him to be completely expertise now his expertise is very good but i think 5511 is where you're going to get the best value for him and cyrus you can stop at 5551 but eventually you'll probably want to expertise him as well so let's go over this again okay your first pair is going to be ramses 5551 probably expertise because you'll be saving for so long before he comes around and also he's just got a great expertise with expertise to Isong Ye. then you'll have a 5511 artemisia i don't really think you should take her past that because there's not really a great reason to Tamiris will be either 5115 if you're insanely lucky or 5155 um, all your skill resets are going to go into her because that's going to be the best value for you um, and that's this is going to be the hardest probably the hardest one to really nail down um, then we've got a 5511 Nebu with a 5551 Cyrus I think eventually you should expertise Cyrus and then from there you can decide where you want to put the rest of your sculptures do you want that 5511 uh, gilgamesh that's totally something that you could do do you want to go for trajan after that to have a really powerful combination with your ethel flood that's also something that you could absolutely do um these are really late game optimizations late game things to be thinking about when it comes to commander pairs that's why you saw trajan here all video um but this is really what you'll be looking at and again it's going to take an extremely long time because archers are like the last in the rotation right um of you know of 
what is it cavalry infantry then archers and so that's kind of where we stand here which really sucks um but again patience will pay off and these are extremely powerful all three of these marches um, are a little bit tanky they have some nice aoe right i love everything about these marches and i think it's going to get you the best value for your sculptures but it's going to take a long long time to get there now the good news is that equipment is pretty nice for archers right now they do have a full epic set which is really cool um so we'll talk about that in a second but this is sort of like your beginner build this is like the first thing that you want to like focus on getting um you obviously have there's a purple here right so this is gonna be the hardest piece for you to get for the entire thing um but in general you got some greens you got some blues this is a pretty basic starter build here you can see zero attack which is really nice you're optimizing for defense and health unfortunately no march speed but you know it's relatively straightforward to get this in terms of production time i don't know how this this probably has changed with the new um i don't think this program is updated with the with the new changes to the equipment system but regardless you can sort of ignore this but this is a, a starter build next you're going to want to go to the full revival set yes archers actually have a full set of the epic tier which is awesome this is a very good set for free-to-play players because you get the set bonus for free so it's an extra six percent of stats that you have over infantry and cavalry players because they don't have any sets which is crazy i hope they add that at some point um you do get 19 percent attack but you get a ton of defense and a little bit of hp as well this is a very solid place to be for archers um obviously it's all purple and it's all special talented so this is going to take you a while to get but rest assured that you have the only epic uh fighting set in the game right you have like what the harvesting set or whatever it is that one doesn't really count um and then later 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 way later down the line you can try to replace um the gloves uh, with and the and the chest with the um, legendary set right so this is also a set here you get three percent extra attack and you get way more HP because of the I think chest piece here is what has the health so this is sort of like your end 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 game for archers um, but you know this is like you shouldn't even really be worrying about this for you know a couple years right um, and you're probably only going to get this on one March unless you're just a godly free-to-play player I don't know how that would be the case but yeah you really want to focus on on this here uh, this is again it's a full set it's pretty straightforward and only archers have it so that is the good news with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the video a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it also I would love for you guys to subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comments down below if you're a free to play archer player I would love to hear from you I would love to hear is it a struggle or are you actually doing really really well I'd love to know I think archer is the least used free to play route so yes let me know in the comments section below there's a link in the description to download rise of kingdoms for free if you're a PC it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play the link does support the channel for free and if you don't like it you can always uninstall it later but again it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms i would say give it a try there's also my social media links which are down there make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter facebook and discord all that stuff always down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace